In this video, we will demonstrate rubber band ligation of internal hemorrhoids. We have no disclosures. Within the anal canal, the submucosa forms three vascular cushions in the left lateral, right anterior, and right posterior positions that are filled with blood vessels and muscle fibers from the internal sphincter and conjoined longitudinal muscle. Straining leads to engorgement of the vascular cushions, and chronic straining leads to weakening of the submucosa and prolapse of the hemorrhoidal tissue. Internal hemorrhoids form above the dentate line, external hemorrhoids form below the dentate line, or a patient may have a combination of the two. With respect to internal hemorrhoids, there are various treatment options available, including in-office techniques and surgical excision. Rubber band ligation, infrared photocoagulation, and sclerotherapy are the three most common office-based techniques, however, there are many others. We will be focusing on rubber band ligation in this video. Hemorrhoids are characterized based on the degree of clinical prolapse. Rubber band ligation can be used for grade 1, 2, and 3 hemorrhoids, but should not be done on grade 4 hemorrhoids where the prolapse cannot be manually reduced. Rubber band ligation fixes the hemorrhoid high in the anal canal, which corrects the prolapse. The rubber band decreases blood flow caudally, causing the hemorrhoid to shrink in size and eventually slough off. We do not have patients perform any colon preparation, however some may recommend a fleet enema prior to the procedure. Prophylactic antibiotics are not commonly used except for those with prosthetic devices or implants. The following are the key steps to rubber band ligation. The McGivney ligator set is prepared. We start by assembling the shaft and ligating drum. The spring handle is then attached. Attach the loading cone and roll the O-ring bands onto the ligating drum. We prefer to place two bands, however you may elect to use only one. You can apply up to three bands at the same setting, however, placing multiple bands may increase pain, urinary retention, and vasovagal reactions. Remove the loading cone. The rubber band ligator is now ready to be used. The other instruments you will need are grasping forceps and an anoscope. Suction ligators, which pull the internal hemorrhoid into the banding instrument, are also commonly used. However, in this video, we will be focusing on the technique using the McGivney ligator and atraumatic forceps. The patient is placed in either the left lateral sims position or the prone jackknife position. Introduce the anoscope with a slant towards the target hemorrhoid. An adequate light source is important for clear visualization. Here we can see a clear delineation, which is the dentate line. Pass the grasping forceps through the ligating drum. Find the apex of the hemorrhoid and grasp the area to test for pain. Insert the drum while pulling the hemorrhoid tissue into the drum. Deploy the O-ring bands. The patient should not feel pain as we are above the dentate line. However, if they report immediate severe pain, the band has most likely incorporated the anoderm. The band should be removed with a band cutter, but some patients may need to be taken to the OR for removal. Check for hemostasis prior to removal of the anoscope. We proceeded to ligate a second hemorrhoid in the right posterior location. The anoscope was inserted and the hemorrhoid was identified.
Following the same procedure, we grasped the apex and tested for pain. The ligating drum was inserted as the tissue was pulled into the drum and the O-ring bands were deployed. Monitor for hemostasis prior to removal of the anoscope. The patient should be counseled that they may have bleeding that occurs five to seven days after ligation and is typically self-limiting. This bleeding is due to sloughing of the ligated hemorrhoid. Follow-up is recommended two to four weeks later to evaluate for success. Complications are rare but can include thrombosis, abscess formation, urinary dysfunction, and sepsis. If pelvic sepsis occurs, patients can present with increasing pain, fever, and urinary retention. A CT scan of the pelvis can be performed to look for error outside of the rectum or inflammation. Diagnosis may also be made during an examination under anesthesia in the OR. Mild cases can be treated with debridement and intravenous antibiotics, while severe cases may require laparotomy with diverting colostomy and pelvic drainage. Early detection and aggressive treatment is crucial if sepsis is suspected, as it can be fatal. Due to the risk of bleeding and infection, rubber band ligation is contraindicated in patients who are immunocompromised, those with coagulopathies are currently on anticoagulants, and patients with cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Rubber band ligation is the most effective non-excisional treatment option. However, there are patients who will require repeat treatments or may need surgical excision in the future. If repeat rubber band ligation is needed due to initial failure, the success rate increases.